Hey, how's it going? This is Gazelleg for grinderschool.com. Back today with part number six of this hand history review for uh, member Oz underscore Husky 610. Um, in the last episode, uh, I actually made a mistake and thought this was the final table bubble. In fact, it's not. This is the uh, two tables before the final table. Um, so hopefully we'll get through to some final table bubble play <clears throat> here. Um, and we'll get straight to the action. Let's go. We're going to get a nice walk. Okay, uh, so we pick up uh, Pocket Kings here. And um, we get a min raise from uh, the button, and we have to decide how we how we want to want to play uh, this particular hand. So we can look at the, this player. Um, we have played 111 hands with this player. Um, let's have a look at some interesting uh, notes. I'll just bring this over here so we can see them on the video. So preflop three bet all in um, with ace queen off and ace five off. He's called a non shove two bet. From the blinds, they called a raise from the blinds with a seven suited. Open all in from the under under the guns under the guns of the hijack, which with five off between five and fifteen bigs with ace king, and open all in from the button uh, with ace nine off suit. Let's look at his steal percentage then, sixty seven percent. Now uh, it's interesting actually. Sometimes when this says sixty seven percent, we know that's going to be two two thirds. If you've only had this opportunity uh, three times, then it's, he's actually only stolen twice. So this is, uh, I mean, this isn't a, uh, an example of this, but sometimes you can see this stat, 67%, and you can think to yourself, right, that's pretty high steal percentage, but actually he's only sold them twice out of three times. Um, so it's not a, a big enough sample size to go on. Here he's had 12 opportunities to steal, and he's stolen eight of them. We can also go into a little bit more detail. Um, using our huddle, we can say attempt to steal from the button, 40%. Uh, again, we only had five opportunities to do it. Um, and from the cutoff, uh, it's, it's quite wide as well. But we can see that um, here it's not going to be just his, his value hands that he's choosing to raise here. That it's going to be quite wide. So uh, let's see what Oz Husky decides to do. Uh, he just decides to, to rip it in. Um, I think I think if this player, um, this Iceman player, was raising a uh, pretty tight range. Um, we can make a hand look really, really weak by just shoving pocket kings here. Um, so if his preflop raise here was uh, sort of 6% um, and his steal percentage was really, really low, then I think we can we can shove here and expect to get called by by, by worse pairs. Um, but I think here I would just sooner um, look to induce, yeah, we get value the times he has, queens, jacks, tens, nines. Um, but he's going to have a whole host of other hands um, in this particular spot. Let's look at his fold to three bet. So every time you three bet, wow. So six out of six times he has folded to a, to a three bet. Um, so I think the best option here is to either make a small three bet where he's just almost forced to play the hand with you. I know that he's going to get to play the hand in position. So we don't want to make it too small. Um, anything between, um, I think... 26k and 30k uh, would be pretty good to, to raise here. Um, we're looking for action, we're looking to induce action. Um, the other thing that we could do uh, is just flat and play the hand post flop. Um, we call here the pot's 30,000. Um, we could easily get it in on uh, by the river, uh, but we are going to be playing out of position, uh, which uh, isn't always the best thing. I think if I had aces here, I think I might just flat aces. Um, so I think we could probably flat flat kings in this spot as well. I'm kind of torn between uh, three betting three betting small and, um, and and just calling. I think calling um, keeps all of his weaker hands in there. If we make a small three bet, if we like, let's say we went to uh, 24k, um, he's going to call with quite a few hands um, that we have we have dominated, and then he's probably going to four bet hands uh, that he feels comfortable getting in uh, for 27 big blinds effective. So. I think I, I think I like the small three bet here, um, and then proceed uh, from there. Uh, we do shove, and he folds. Unfortunately, we fold the jack nine, and we choose to steal with the nine six. Let's look at the players behind. So we would have a a five big blind stack <clears throat> in the small blind. Um, 
I guess we're Ray's calling this player because if he shoves, we're getting ridiculously good odds. So we're going to have to have to call. Um, having having said, you're, ha- you're going to have to call because you're getting really good odds. Um, that's not always the case. Uh, you don't have to have to call. No one's forcing you to do it. Um, and hopefully, we'll come up with some um, scenarios where you might want to fold, um, even though you're getting pretty good odds. For example, if a player is only three bet shoving with a really tight range, and you have a hand like uh, I'm think so. It's something like a a, uh, a pretty pretty weak hand. Um, you can actually think, okay, well maybe I'm getting uh, two to one here. Thir- I need 33 percent equity to make the call. But actually, um, you can think to yourself, well, actually, I don't think I am getting that. Um, I'm not getting 33 percent in that spot. So you you might choose to fold. So let's see what happens. He does fold, and then the big blind decides to to three bet. Uh, let's just look at his three bet starts. So three bet nine percent. Uh, but he hasn't three bet versus a steal once yet. Let's look how many times he had six opportunities. So um, in this sense, because we know that he's probably only going to three bet with a, with a strong hand, um, raising a hand like nine six off suit is good because we know that if he does shove, we're just going to fold. Having, however, we're not going to be in particularly good shape if this guy just uh, decides to shove. So I think I'd probably I would probably fold in this spot um, just because I don't really want to call this guy off. Uh, but generally, I think this, uh, this still would be would be fine. So that changes uh, some things slightly. Uh, the player behind us now is uh, ten or eleven big blinds. So we can we can look to steal a little bit more. Um, I think now we could actually raise fold against this guy um, unless we have more more info about him. Um, so we'll see how how that goes. Okay, and uh, this looks like now the last, we're down to the last two tables. So we were, we did have uh, three tables left, now we've got two tables. So uh, that's just, my first thing we're going to do is look at the stack sizes around the table. Um, so we have a, let's have a look, 68 big blinds stack, 104 big blinds, 17 big blinds, 40 big blinds. We've got 22 big blinds, we've got a 24 big blind stack, 11 big blinds, 40 big blinds. And 17 big blinds. So we're kind of uh, towards the towards the bottom. We've got a couple of big stacks over here. We've got a big stack over here. 40 big blinds. Not I mean not huge, but definitely bigger than bigger than ours. Almost twice the size of ours. We've got a few short stacks. We've got another uh, 40 big blind stack over here. So what I'd like to do, um, we are going to continue raising hands, looking to steal, looking to pick up the pot. If we just go back one. We can see the pot's almost 17k, so it's definitely worth uh, picking up. Uh, we look at the players uh, behind us, and we can see this guy uh, folds big blinds 60% of the time. So not a massive amount, um, but maybe these two players are going to be our targets. Um, so say if this player decides to um, fold a lot in the big blind, we can choose to, to raise against him because if he does shove, um, we can still we can still fold. Uh, we're getting pretty good odds, but if we know that he's pretty tight when he when he does three bet shove, we can we can fold a, a lot more as well. Um, and just look to uh, pick up pick up chips by by raising uh, by stealing at this stage. Um, we'll keep an eye out uh, for some from loose aggressive players because we have a twenty two big blind stack. Uh, we have an opportunity to three bet shove against players behind us, uh, but we don't want to be making too much of a Big mistake. Uh, if it's just marginally plus chip EV at this stage, um, I might avoid taking that spot simply because we are quite close to the to the final table. Uh, so I'll try. Actually, I think we'll we'll play through the hands. Uh, see if we can pick up any reads. So we get about a third pot, C bet, and fold. Uh, pick up Ace King here, and everyone folds. Unfortunately, uh, we get a raise and a fold. Raise in the fold. We get a shove from the short stack. Get to queen eight offsuit and pocket nines. Just go back here. Um, but I don't like this this shove at all. I think queen eight suited is just about all right to be a, a shove here. Um, with just under ten big blinds, I just think queen eight offsuit. You've got to get through five different five players behind you. Um, two big stacks who could potentially call that much wider. Um, that than you would expect a general uh, sort of average calling range. So I think I would I would fold queen it off suit uh, in that spot. Uh, King Jack suited here. 
Um, we don't know much about the table. We've seen this guy open. Uh, we have 153 hands. That's uh, so we, again. So it says 153 hands here, but this session is five. What I can't remember is if we played against this player early on in the tournament, or actually if it, this is just players uh, that I actually have in my own database hands on them. Um, so we'll try and go off the from this session. So so far we've seen five hands, and he's um, raised once and see better that third pot. So. Uh, but I think I, I think we could open the King Jack suited here. I don't think we're going to get three bet shoved on light at all. Um, there are no really really short stacks. The shortest stack at the table is this guy who has sixteen bigs. I don't think he's going to be three bet shoving under the gun under the gun raiser uh, particularly light. So I, I'd, I'd like a, a raise here. I know if we pick up um, any kind of uh, draw. Then we can uh, a few ways to play it. We can we can bet it. We can check raise things like that. Uh, if we do get called in position, um, so there is some some merit and some value for for raising uh, and reason for raising King Jack suited there. Raise, bet and call, and then this player decides to don't lead um, uh, gets his opponent to fold. Uh, fold in the four three. I think that's fine. Let's. Um, See the action, raising a call, and a call, check, he bets. I'm guessing this guy's either gonna raise or fold, and he folds. Okay, uh, a bit of a light steal here. Um, don't know too much about the players behind us. This guy we played with before, about 65 hands he played uh, in this session. Um, so we don't do too much, and I think nine four five four offsuit is just a bit too weak here. Let's let's preserve our stack here. Um, we've got twenty two big blinds, and we uh, can use that to to three bet shove against someone from you know an aggressive player from from late position. Uh, also nine four offsuit just plays really poorly post lock. I mean, if we're just looking to raise fold against some some nits in the blinds, um, then I think this is fine because we're never going to be calling with nine four offsuit. Uh, but if any either of these, let's say any of these players call, we've got a hand that just really doesn't play well at all. So and here we go, get shoved on, do induce some action behind though, so maybe it's not all bad. Um, and this guy shoves pocket five, so we're 26, uh, 22 big blinds effective. That's definitely something to, to note um, against this, this player, uh, that he's, he's prepared to, to shove pocket fives in, in that spot. Um, but it's one less player. Um, a steal there from from early position. Well, a raise from early position takes it down. There we get a bet and just a min raise. Now, I think it's an interesting just to kind of just to click it back, isn't it? Um, just just over. Um, this guy is kind of representing pretty pretty strong hand, um, a jack or or a five. Um, I think maybe with a five he would just choose to flat call here. Um, and if he did have uh, ace jack. You know, there's the potential that he's going to be uh, beaten by queens and kings. Maybe he's trying to slow the so slow the action down uh, somewhat with uh, a pair, say sixes to tens. So we'll see how it works. Okay, and this guy just folds. Um, it's a shame we don't get to see showdown. Uh, it'd be great to see what uh, moves players are making. Uh, I just think on that kind of board, it's uh, it's a great board to see bet because it's very difficult for your opponent to. Um, let's go back to it. Uh, to have anything, um, so yeah, it's good to it's good to raise then uh, as well because of, of the same same reasoning. Um, I just don't think he's representing very very much on this floor. I think if he had a five, he'd probably just call and uh, try to pick up a, a turn bet as well. Um, you know, if he's expecting his opponent to continue with uh, a jack, maybe maybe tens nines. I think you can get more value for, if he had a five from just calling. Therefore, I don't think he has a five in this spot. Um, probably just wants to put pressure on his opponent by making the smallest possible possible bet. Yeah, full three X from this player. Um, not much about him so far. Uh, we had a short stack shove. We have to fold. Definitely. Okay, right. Uh, Queen Jack off suit. Um, I think this is going to be plus chip EV. Um, but we are. Well, let's have a look at this. Three. There are seven players left. Let's say there. It could be uh, max eight players on the other tables. Fifteen players left. We are six players from the from the final table. 
Um, we can't put a huge amount of pressure on these on these two players. Obviously, this player is only going to be able to call with a pretty pretty strong hand. Um, but this guy can call us and still have 350k behind. Um, I think I prefer to just min raise here um, and play the, the play the pot post flop. Um, this guy is not three bet versus steal in two opportunities, and he's three bet 21%. Um, so far, but I think I would still I would still look to to open here. Um, let's have a look at this fold small blinds 100%. Fold big blinds. Okay, it's only zero, but it's only had one opportunity to fold the big blinds. Uh, yeah, so I'd, I'd look to min raise here. I uh, think you know maybe if we had 14, 15 big blinds, we could just uh, shove here. But I, I prefer a, a min raise here. In raise and three bet and flat in position. So the stack sizes. Okay, so this guy started with 33 bigs and has flatted the three bet. We haven't seen this guy three bet yet. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Pretty healthy, just over half pot C bet, and this guy folds. Um, but you know, could have had a hand ace queen, ace jack, king queen. They just didn't want to fold. Um, uh, pre flop, I guess. Uh, ace nine suited. Similar to the, the King Jack suited, you could open this, but I think now we've only got 18 big blinds. We should look to preserve our stack um, and have still maintain some fold equity if we are able to 3-bet shove against someone from, from late position. Uh, and the blinds have gone up as well. So a lot of pre-flop action. Um, again, we get a bet and a raise. It's the second time this guy's done it, but this time he goes a little bit bigger, uh, possibly because of the nature of the board. It's um, a lot draw, more draw heavy than the Jack 5 5 board. Um, this time the player sticks it in and it gets called. Let's see. So this time this player didn't believe this, uh, this guy. And I suppose that's the beauty of uh, if he did bluff raise the Jack 5 5 hand, um, he's induced his opponent to shove all in with uh, a really weak ace. Um, I don't think I particularly like this hand. I think uh, we do get it. This, yeah, ace two gets it in against a hand like a uh, straight, sort of ten jack, uh, six seven kind of hand. Um, maybe even ten seven if this guy decided to flat that. Um, and also some diamond draws, I guess, if he was going to call them off. Um, but he's also obviously going to call us with the, the value hands in his range and. Um, I just don't think it's a particularly good spot, um, but I guess this guy just decided to shove. Just didn't believe this guy to have a hand, um, and that's as I said. That's why it can be uh, great to to make raises against uh, players, especially the player you're going to be playing blind versus blind. Uh, cause they're just not going to believe you. Heads up. Um, okay, so about 18 minutes. We'll see if we can get a couple more hands. I want to see if we can get to the final table. Uh, this player shoves in. So he's shoved a few times now. Um, I'm sure he's shown down. We get raised in a three bet again. We get flat. This guy goes a little less, little less than half pot this time. He gets min raised. We get a call. This time he decides to to check. Um, I think whenever we look, we're looking at hands that we're not involved in, um, we can try to put our opponents on a range. Um, I would. I think we could. We could guess this player uh, doesn't have a particularly strong hand at this point. Probably has some sort of weak one pair kind of hand. Um, it goes check check, and this guy just suddenly decides to bet. Um, he could be betting with something like an ace jack, something like queen x. Um, I think with a bet like this, it looks pretty value heavy. He's not going to be doing it with a must, missed diamond draw. Let's get called. So let's see if. Uh, any of my assumptions were correct. Okay, so he did have the, the queen. So on the turn, we were right in the assumption that he yeah, didn't have a particularly strong hand. And then he bet third pot for value on the river. Um, so I think the three bet with queen jack off suit is pretty good. Um, we've seen then that he, he can bet second pair and give up on the on the turn. Uh, but then obviously value bet a strong hand on the river. Um, I guess this player just wanted to uh, you know, exercise pot control on the turn, which which I think is fine. It's, I mean, he's um, there only a few, uh, his opponent only has a few outs um, as as played and as seen. Um, and I guess it's just pretty difficult for him to to call here. 
uh, sorry, to fold here. Uh, I guess he believes that he's he's chopping against the vast majority of his players' range. But I don't think this is going to be a diamond draw betting a third pot. I think generally he looked a bet much bigger, especially if after he gets raised on the on the flop, uh, min raised on the flop. Um, so I would imagine this. You know, he's he's. He's, I guess he's he's looking to chop at best um, in this particular spot. Um, this player's choosing to three bet hands, like uh, well any ace x kind of hand. Uh, I guess there's a chance that this player has the hand like ten jack, um, maybe like ten jack of diamonds possibly. Um, so he obviously didn't want to fold on the on the flop, but with the with the gut shot and the diamond draw, um, yeah, it's pretty difficult to fold ace. Well, I want to say, is it difficult to fold ace three there? Uh, I think the displaced player's range is, is heavily weighted towards um, ace x and queen x hands in this spot rather than rather than bluffs. Um, so I'm not sure. You know, obviously we are we're chopping against the ace x hands, but we're you know we're looting against ten jack and um, any any queen x any queen x hand. Uh, but interesting, interesting hand that we that we're not involved in. Let's see if we can get. Uh, through a little bit more. Uh, so we get been raised, we fold the ace two. I think that's good. I think we could three bet shove there with um, pretty pretty strong hands, pretty pretty strong range. At this point, uh, there are six players left. Could be seven on the other table, thirteen players. Uh, but we are, you know, we we've got some catching up to do. So we could look to play pretty aggressively. Something like ace jack suited, ace queen nines or tens plus. Actually, maybe even wider than that. Kind of eight plus this player's open quite a lot. We can have a look middle position. Yeah, so we could expect to get quite a lot of folds and even get called by hands that we dominate um, as as well. Uh, but with ace two, I think I'm just comfortably comfortably folding. So yeah, we could go wider. Uh, probably ace ten suited, ace jack off, maybe sevens, sevens plus. Uh, but as we are, you know, close to the final table, I don't want to make too big a mistake. Uh, this player, obviously, by min raising, has already uh, demonstrated or shown that he is willing to um, to play the hand. Um, so we uh, we obviously need a, a, a stronger stronger hand than than what we perceive his range range to be. Uh, we should have the ten nine off suit here. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't have seen the action. Do we like this? Um, it looks like we you know we could possibly be. Um, in last place by now, so sort of 11th or 10th uh, out of 10 or 11. Um, so I think 10 9 suited, I'd be much happier showing here. Um, I've got 14 big blinds, I'm shoving into you know, players who are not complete knit, so they could call uh, fairly wide. What I'll do, I'll load this hand into ICM Isa. Um, let's have a look at. What it's you know we'll go from the from the starting point um, see what see what's what and uh, we'll, uh, this is probably the last hand of this uh, of this video so I'll pause the video and uh, bring it up one second right I am back let's have a quick look at this um, okay so uh, those of you who've not seen I see mine before uh, usually we would use it in chip uh, chippy V mode. Um, well, let's actually just start with chippy V mode. So uh, we can um, we can load the history uh, from the clipboard, just copied and pasted it over, and we can click on calculate Nash equilibrium. This is a, a starting point, and we can see the range of hands um, that we can profitably uh, shove in in this in this spot. Um, and there's the range there. And we see ten nine off suit. Um, Netus negative four hundred and ninety one chips. Um, this is if uh, the button is is calling the this range. Uh, he's nice to do ten off suit. Um, we get overcalled. Uh, so the small blind or the big blind calls as well. With this range, nines plus ace queen suited plus ace king off suit. I'll show you some more ranges here. So the small blind calls our shove with this range, and the big blind calls our shove with, with this range. Um, we could think that this is perhaps a little bit tighter, um, but he does have uh, the big blind does have a pretty healthy stack. And calling us, he's still going to have almost nine hundred k. So. Um, yeah, I'll probably, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go with uh, what suggested at first. Um, 
And so let me just show you this other other cool feature. So as so let's just keep calculate again. So this is the range of hands. Um, as I said, ten nine suited. I was happy with. Um, that's gonna you know feel pretty pretty confident there. Um, about, uh, getting that in. Um, so I'm, I, I am looking when I'm in the last place. I'm looking for any sort of plus plus EV plus chip EV spot to to get it in. Um, so I'd be happy with ten nine suited, but with ten nine off suit not. Uh, not too sure. If we click on ICM, uh, we can check the the payout. Um, I'm gonna choose. Uh, let's have a look at this. Um, I'm just gonna choose the, the Sunday million, just because um, it has a sort of similar payout. I would imagine to uh, this this tournament, uh, the structure. I mean, not the actual uh, payout. Obviously, this is a five dollar tournament. And the Sunday million is two hundred and fifteen. Um, but then we can click MTT, and what this does, we can also look at our um, equity um, when we are not at our final table. So I've guessed that there are probably 11 players left. Uh, if you know the total chip count at this point, you can put that in there, but it uh, works out the average um, at your table, and then you can put it on to... Um, uh, and it, yeah, then it works out for for eleven players. Um, so we can see if the range gets slightly narrow. I think um, let's just on, let's just check this. So it was thirty one percent, and with the MTT, it's going to be okay twenty nine twenty nine percent. Um, it's kind of it's kind of funky. Um, Kind of hands that we can that we can shove here. Um, you see, it's not particularly. I mean, it was zero point zero two percent. It's not particularly healthy, um, but this is suggesting uh, a really really tight range. Um, not sure uh, if I completely agree with this. Uh, that's ten nine suit, ten nine off suit. Um, yeah, if I completely agree, with this seems a bit uh, strange and, and funky. I'm not sure if I've. Um, Done something a little bit odd in this spot uh, for it to suggest that you can profitably shove. Uh, let's have a look. King ten, oh no, king ten off suit would be fine. Um, king two, king three suited. Uh, just about is uh, it's positive there. Um, I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure um, what's what's gone on there. Um, so I guess let's uh, let's ignore that for now and let's go back to to chip EV. So sorry about that. I'm not sure what the what the issue is. Um, uh, so this is yeah, this is the kind of range. Uh, so we are in last place. We're looking for plus uh, chip EV spots to pick up chips in this spot. So I'd fold ten on and off suit, but ten on suit I go with on any of these hands. Um, Hands as well. I think maybe I, I might uh, min raise and fold some of these weaker ace x hands uh, because if we do get called, we're likely to be crushed by by a stronger stronger range. Um, so we do get called and we bink two pair on the turn. Nah, we beat ace eight. So we know that this player is. I mean, we don't. We never know what exactly the range of uh, our opponents are going to call. But if we can now add add this and see. If that would have changed anything, so the button is actually calling with a eight suited now. We can go a little bit wider. Okay, not by much. See if that changes things. Uh, not really, not at all. Still at thirty one percent. So, um, yeah, I'd still be folding ten on off suit. Um, but these are the the positive hands that we can look to uh, look to shove in uh, in this spot. And the reason why, obviously, we want to be shoving, uh, we want any opportunity to pick up chips at this point because we're in last place and we're trying to. Trying to play catch up. Okay, uh, so that's the end of this review. Uh, quite a long one today, um, in terms of uh, it being a short. Uh, but that's all good. I wanted to pack in a lot of information. Hopefully, I've I've done that. So please leave some comments. Um, and yeah, this has been Gazelle for GrinderSchool.com. Until uh, next time, have an amazing time at the tables. Take it easy, guys. See you later.